Hello everyone and welcome back to the uh, Pokemon trading card game Bremen Regionals here in uh, Germany. I'm Nicholas Pierce once again and I'm here with Lydia and we are about to start uh, round two of this, uh, this regional championships. So now in round two we're going to say Jes see Jesper Eriksson, a Danish player versus Hugh Kirkham from the UK. Now, uh, yeah, we will. And uh, Jesper, you know, he's not actually that good. You know, he, he, he's just a massive scrub. You know, he hasn't achieved anything at all. Actually, just a terrible player. No, <laughs> we, we, we like we like to we like to uh, poke a bit of fun at uh, Jesper, but uh, he's an extremely accomplished player, former world champion in uh, in the seniors division, and uh, had a very good first year in Masters as well. Sadly, didn't wasn't able to do too well at Worlds uh, this year, but still had a very great season, and I'm sure he'll have another great season now. He could prove that he's also a good player in Masters division, and that his uh, seniors world championship win was not only because it was in seniors division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're sort of kicking off straight away. So here we are. Jesper is going, it looks like he's going to start with a Volcanian and Luke is starting with a Xerneas. So yeah, I, I've actually talked with Luke before the event and he is playing the Xerneas break deck. So it's a very so simple strategy focus deck. Um, just focus it around you know, using Geomancy lots and then hitting for big damage with Xerneas breaks live stream. Whereas Jesper looks like he will be playing Volcanian. Yeah, looks like it. Do you know if Luke Kirkham is going to play uh, straight Xerneas? Because I saw some deck variants with Xerneas and Garbodor. Really? I uh, I don't think that's the variant he's playing. I'm fairly sure he's just playing straight, you know, Xerneas, Geomancy lots, do big damage. That's it's a deck that um Luke has been on for a while, if that makes sense. He's been really sort of keen on playing it and he really likes it a lot, so I'd imagine that's the version he's playing, unless he's changed, no, no, I've not been aware of it. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Um, looks like it's Jesper's turn, he's going to go for a... Uh, is it a Volcanion and a Lele on his bench? Uh, it's, uh, he's got a Lele on his bench, he's got a supporter, but he's at the other Pokemon he's for, I believe that's up an Ultra Ball, he's actually, it's a Turtonator GX. Oh, okay. Yeah, so of course the Turtonator, very, very strong Pokemon with uh, yeah, the just be able to do 160 damage for two fires and a colorless energy. So with uh, one steam up, you know, able to knock out most things with two steam ups and you know, fighting fury belts, you're knocking out Gardevoirs. And oh, a very strong start from Jesper. Oh, yes. That is a Kiawe turn one. Wow. <sighs> is it just, did Jesper start the round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesper okay. went first. So that's even stronger. It means that Kiawe essentially has no drawback at all. That's crazy it's insane yeah this, the kiali card is one that we've seen uh printed in every single fire deck uh, ever since it came out because just the ability to get four fire energy out of the deck is worth giving up the turn because in terms of the tempo that you get from it just being able to power up an attack like that is uh, absolutely ridiculous and we can see it used to full effect here first turn of the game and yes has five energy down on his side of the field yeah that's that's insane and it's pretty impressive but luke and his deck uh don't does uh, they don't have that big problem of getting energies out of the stack because Xerneas has his Geomancy attack which allows you to search your deck for two fairy energy cards and attach it to two bench Pokemon. So in terms of getting energy into play, Xerneas is also a pretty good deck. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other really big important thing to remember is then the thing that will make the matchup a bit trickier for Jesper potentially, because uh, Xerneas Break is a one prize attacker, you run into the same issue that you run into against Greninja. Every yeah. single time you're taking a knockout, it's only for one prize. So yeah. Jesper has to work so hard to take all six of his prizes unless he's able to Guzma up the type of Lele's. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's pretty much the only way you can like uh, keep tempo with like the prize trade is by yeah, making sure he's able to knock out Le Lele's, but even then, you're not focusing on the attackers, so you kind of like lose either way. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's interesting because in in this kind of meta game, you're usually not that used to taking only one prize card, and especially in decks like Xerneas or yeah Greninja, where you only take one prize card all the time, it can be hard. 
Yeah, especially when you are in the X deck yourself and, you know, every, every time they're knocking you out, you, they take two prizes. So it's like, oh, you know, how can I win this race? You know, it's just never going to work out for me. Um, but let's say Luke is off to a pretty decent start himself. He's able to, you know, he's got all his uh, Zenith's I did, Geomancy. And now Tigger Play is going to pass back to Jesper as we do see him throw down a net ball. So let's you search a deck for any basic Pokemon and just put it straight on the bench. It's a really great versatile search card. Looks like uh, Jesper's eye up an Orin Guru. Oh yeah, he just was playing Oranguru. Um, well, he didn't get it yet. Oh yeah, he, yeah. he decides to, to take the Oranguru. Uh, Oranguru allows you to draw up to... Until you have yeah, three cards. Until you have three cards in your hand. So uh, it's it's pretty good in terms of late game ends, but also if you if you are able to play your hand down to very low size. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before we actually carry on with the rest of this game, I think it might be a good idea just to check in with you guys. Can you please tell us if the microphone volume is fixed now? Uh, if uh, it's like oh, just uh, scroll. Oh, now it's now it's too loud. Oh, okay. People are saying it's fixed now. It's too loud. Um, yeah. If it is too loud, then let us know. We can turn it down a little bit. But if it's good for most people, then maybe just turn down the volume on your uh, your respective headsets <laughs> at okay, home. Volume is good. Okay. Okay. Great. great. It's really great to know. Glad, glad we were able to fix that for you guys. So, I had to make sure of yes and no. Okay, but most mostly goods. Okay. Okay. Yeah, too loud is better than too loud. It's true because you can always turn it down. So yeah, great. Yeah. Good that we were able to fix that. Anyway, back yeah, to we, the game. Yeah, we also fixed the webcam issue, so now you can see Jasper yeah. and. Uh, no longer a substitute. Yeah. Doll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So. Um, so Jesper was able to look like attach a fighting fury belt, uh, and it looks like yeah he just did a volcanic heat, knocking out the first Xerneas and taking his first prize card. Play is going to pass back to Luke, as we see he just does another geomancy. Yeah, Jesper's putting a, a lot of pressure on Luke. It's only round two, and he already has started knocking out Xerneas. So uh, yeah, it's it's a very strong start for Jesper. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is really all Jesper wants to do because there is so much effort he needs to do to take every single prize. He just wants to go from turn two, knock out, knock out, knock out, knock out, just yeah. constantly. And that's exactly what he's been able to do here. And in fact, he will be able to do it again. It's like, oh, and even the oh. perfect is he gets the Guzma onto the Lele and he has the Fury Belt on the uh, Turtonator as well. Wow. So 170 damage. This is exactly what Jesper wants to do right now. It's a really, really strong early turns for Jesper. Yeah, Des Despo just had an amazing start. I wonder if he can can keep that up in the, the whole tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it is Jesper, yes, you know. Yeah, he has been to get you get a little bit lucky sometimes. Just just saying, dude, you know. <laughs> we, always, like, we always like to like he he, he just like. I know he takes it really well to be fair as well like, yeah, yeah he does true. he's just uh he's like the, the almost like the P european pokemon meme king at this point <laughs> yeah just just for also makes fun of himself a yeah. lot so it does so it's it's all good uh, back to luke's turn we see a super rod there shuffling in lele and energy and something else uh probably xerneas double colorless goes onto the a new lele onto the bench and down goes an n it is a shame that luke had to lele for another supporter there because now if uh Jesper has another guzma he could just do the exact same thing again and now you can also see the the yeah the strengths are the consistency oranguru adds because jasper now gets and down to three cards in his hand and if he can play down any of these three cards which is quite probable he can already use oranguru to get some more cards in his hand yeah um oranguru is oranguru along with or, or along with octillery they're like the ultimate yeah. end proofing cards you know it's to be able to get yourself out of a low uh, and then to a low hand size like it, so many games are lost on the back of you know being into a low number of hand cards and just being able to you know push back and say you know what i actually just draw more and maybe see an out with more anger is what makes it so strong although it looks like yes but drew a floatstone of super rod and sycamore anyway so it's like yeah <laughs> doesn't even need, didn't even need anger <laughs> of course he didn't <laughs> uh. sometimes you're just lucky yeah that, that's the game also i can't talk i uh uh, one against one of the Ericsson brothers, not yes, but against us, Team One Ericsson literally drew the luckiest I've ever drawn in my life when uh, he was playing. Um, <laughs> he was playing uh, Water Box. I was playing Night March. He like quaking punched me and literally end me into like a Sycamore and do Night Marches <laughs> just for, for a knockout. I was just like, I don't, I don't think uh, Simon likes me anymore after that. <laughs> but, but not seriously, but it's just like, nah. Yeah, There's, sometimes it just happens. But it does. Sometimes that. it also happens to your opponent. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, I've I've been on both ends many times. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So super hard from Jesper going to shuffle in a fire two fire energies and a, and a Pokemon. I don't think he will be able to do another knockout attack this turn. Unfortunately for him, it's uh, 
he, because it's unlike expanded where you have access to blacksmith in standard you only really have kiawe and max elixirs yeah. so he isn't he won't be able to do another bright flame unless he oh is there something about to happen here no okay it's not he has got a float stone yeah or on for two he does see uh, a max he, elixir yeah he drew a max elixir and that's oh is that the oh i guess i think that is a salandit yeah it is okay so he decides to attach an energy to it he found yeah. with max elixir and he has a ho-ho down as well. Did, did, did you already say that? I can't. No. no. So, yeah, so it's interesting. He's almost like they built a hybrid of Volcanian Turtonator with that ho-ho slazzle deck. Yeah. He's sort of thinking, you know what, maybe I don't want to focus the deck around these two, but they're still worth including in Volcanian, so I'll you know, put them in. And it, it does make sense. I mean, ho-ho gives you really great coverage because it's uh, weak, it has a different weakness. Uh, not It's not weak to water. Yeah. The water it's weak to lightning. And then also the um, Salazzle, really great um, late game attacker because the more Christ cards you take, the more damage it does. And it only attacks with two energy. Yeah. So it's pretty strong. Especially in a deck where you, you want to be very aggressive at the beginning yeah. and you start taking your prices early. Yeah. The Salazzle so, rewards you for early game yeah. aggression because the, the quicker you take your prizes, the quicker it's doing big damage. And it looks like yes, but we'll have to be content with a shell trap here. Still a very good attack, of course. So yeah. doing thirty damage, and uh, if uh, Luke decides to do a damaging attack to the the Terminator, it will take another eight damage counters, which is a huge number. Yeah, but let's talk a little bit more about Luke. Luke is not in such a bad board position actually. He has his Xerneas out. He has his first break now. All Xerneas have a good amount of energy attached to it, so. He can start dealing a lot of damage now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the Xerneas Break is a sort of deck that probably expects to fall back a little bit anyway, because you do spend the early turns just not doing any damage, just you know, geomancy, geomancy, yeah. build up your energy. And then the objective of the deck is really to build your board up to a state where you can do something like this. Yeah. And he, there's <laughs> so. a fairy garden in play, so Luke can just retreat without having any retreat costs. So yeah. Yeah. And with the choice ban, that's actually even with the Fury Bell, that is indeed a yeah. knockout on the Turtonator. Very impressive, and two prize cards for Luke. So Luke is gonna catch up in the next few turns. Let's see how how it's gonna work out for him. Yeah. So yes, but he does find himself the Salazzle GX. If he finds one fire energy, he'll be able to do the. I can't remember the name of the attack, but he's <laughs> taken three prize cards at this point. So yeah. He'll, yeah. So he'll be able to take a knockout on this Zernius break, which is pretty good. And it looks like this was another Sycamore. Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. So he should find an energy with drawing seven cards. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He, he doesn't really need it though, does he? Because, oh, because yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, that's true. he does. He, he does decide to do the steam up anyway. Yeah. But oh, okay. So now because he does the steam up, he's able to take knock out with the volcano instead of the salazzle. Uh, he can now yeah. save the salazzle. This makes sense. So yeah, he's probably going to do a volcanic heat now at this point. Um, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So one extra prize for Jesper and... Uh, Luke is now left without any Xerneas break, so he needs to find a break card now. He does. It shouldn't be oh. too hard to find. He just drew an Ultra Ball, so yeah. he should be fine. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, the, I think the bigger problem for Luke is that he actually lost a lot of energy from that. There's yeah. no EXP shares on his side of the field when that knockout happened, so he actually lost two energy. So he's going to have to build that back up again if he wants to take the knockout onto this Volcanian. And it looks like uh, Lele grabs a supporter. Ultra Ball is gonna just gonna find him with the Xerneas break. Yeah, discarding two yeah. energy, or oh, discarding a fairy and a fairy, fairy garden. garden. And uh, the Xerneas break will come down, and yeah, there it is. Yeah. And does he? Ha he must have another energy in hand because let's see, there's one, two, three, yeah, four. Yeah, he five. must have. There it is. Yeah, double color it is. And so now Life Stream will be able to do 200 damage, and yeah, just be able to knock out this. Uh, Xerneas, sorry, knock out this um, uh, Volcanian in the active. Yeah. So we can see uh, that this game is progressing so much faster than the last game. The last game was really yeah, just, you know, This game is, is compared to the other one, it's a rush. Yeah, it is. It's just because uh, last game was a bit slow build up mirror, build up my attackers, yeah. do a big thing. And here it's just like, you know, race, prize, race, prize, prize, just racing prizes all day, all day every day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can pri provide a winner interview this turn. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd hope <laughs> this so. This round. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> So Luke, they're playing the N uh, just to try and cut down Jesper's options a little bit. It looks like yeah. he drew into two. Is that two Lele he drew into? I think so. <laughs> that's pretty funny Whoa. if that's the case. <laughs> oh, Luke finding a rescue stretcher as well is pretty good. Yeah. So he's actually able to get two Xenius breaks out. If so, even if one gets knocked out, he still have access to another one. And a Max Elixir. So he's really just thinning out these cards from his deck. Oh, although it looks like he didn't find any energies yeah. from the Max Elixir. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Of course, it happens yeah. sometimes when you're playing Max Elixir. It's to, to be expected. And I believe 
the amount of energy in Luke's deck is already pretty low as he had a lot of energies on the field through his geomancy attacks. So Yeah. And oh is that oh that's it, Guzmurth. Yeah, uh, takes last two prizes and that is the game. Wow. So already fourteen minutes and we have already finished game one and we're moving on to the game two with Jesper taking the lead. Yeah. So yeah, I think in that game it really was the case of both players were racing for prizes very well, but Jesper just had that early start and he was able to just race more quickly. So in the end, he was just able to you know use the Guzma on the yeah. melee and just take the KO with Slazzle. Just a yeah, just a, yeah, just unfortunate. There wasn't really much Luke could do there, I think. Yeah, I don't think so as well. But it was it was nice to see how how this non uh, EX GX deck could. Uh, get back into the game through drawing more prizes with knockouts and yeah you can yeah. kind of see the advantages of playing more uh yeah evolution pokemon or non ex gx pokemon yeah absolutely if if, if the zonius break was ex or gx focused yes would have won that you know two yeah. or three turns ago potentially but um I think the biggest issue for Luke that game was that Jesper was start was just too fast. You yeah. know, literally, you know, second or third turn of the game, and Jesper had already taken three prizes. That, yeah. That's too much to recover from. If he'd only taken one, maybe two, I think then Luke would have been able to get a comeback because he only had two prizes left to take himself. But Jesper was just that little bit too quick. Yeah, and Jesper had had a little bit of luck having the Guzma at the right time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. We are shuffling up and getting ready for game two. Luke will be going first this time, so that will be able to help him out a little bit. And it looks like he started Xerneas again, yeah. so exactly the start he wants to see. Well, the, the one horrible thing with this deck is if you start with like your one or Guru or a Lele, it's just like, <laughs> oh, just, just uh, why me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so there was a handshake there, and the game begins as Luke does, of course, opt to go first, finding himself another Xerneas, also great to have, to bench that straight away. Probably going to put a fairy on the active, and he might even just pass, depending on what he has. Yeah, I, I believe there's a Xerneas break in his hand, so he does not want to... Get rid of that. Yeah. But no, definitely not. And yeah, indeed, he just uh, he chose to pass the turn. As Jesper starts with a Salandit, uh, to chooses to attach a fire energy... And attack the with it. Oh, yeah, he did a steam up and then he hit ah, attack for because so it does yeah. 10. <laughs> but it said it does 40. This makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't look like Jesper has such a good hand. No, definitely not. <laughs> um, but see, uh, you see, you see the grimace on Luke's face though because he's wondering. Yeah. <laughs> he must have has an N in his hand. He doesn't want to play it. So instead, he's just going to Geomancy seed to the one Pokemon. Yeah. Oh. It's not optimal because with Geomancy, you have to find two different targets you may not attach two energies on the same pokemon so luke is only allowed to attach one energy with geomancy but still luke it seems like luke has a better start than jesper does so he should be fine yeah we'll see it'll be interesting if jesper decides to steam up and do another 40 damage with salander <laughs> it'll be pretty funny actually but uh, i mean if he does that four times he takes the knockout on the Xerneas, so that's something i guess as if his salander survives <laughs> four more <laughs> turns <laughs> he has put a feisty true belt on it though oh <laughs> uh, so i think i think slander has 70 hp so now that's 110 yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty pretty funny but uh even jasper's laughing <laughs> yeah it's like oh well, well, what is this <laughs> and no oh just not even a steam up just oh. 10 damage or 20 with the fury yeah. belt oh wow so yeah funny situation for luke to be in right now does he say so now he chooses to evolve into the zonius break does he is that enough of a knockout now i'm not sure if it is yeah, I think this is a, a good uh, uh, time to talk about time management again. Yes, it because is. Because <laughs> this would be actually a good point for Jesper to just give up. Potentially. Uh, like, actually, <laughs> maybe not. Like, he's just seen an Ultra Ball. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so he's got Lily for a supporter now. Yeah, that's it. So now Jesper will be able to sort of make a comeback into this game. Uh, yeah, getting bailed out there. I mean, I guess you have to not draw dead eventually, right? But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so yes, but they're going for the max elixir first. Looks like that will yeah, be a he hit. Found an energy. Goes onto the volcano. And then after this, we will probably just see that sycamore get whacked down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sycamore! Just for finally getting into this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't mean, we'll have to keep attacking with self <laughs> it, it has Salazzle as well, so that's pretty cool. Oh. And there's a sycamore. Yeah. 
He's going to want to retreat that if he can, because he doesn't really want to leave that active. Okay, another max elixir. Ooh. And he finds another energy. Actually, I, I can't remember what Slazzle's retreat cost is. If it's only one, he, he, and he hits, he has two energy in his hand, yeah. he can attach the Volcanian, steam up, retreat, and take the knockout. Whoa. Does he? Yeah, yeah, that's possible. Uh, I, I'm not so sure about Slazzle's retreat cost. Yeah. Let's see what it is. Oh, he has a float stone, but obviously oh, can't okay. can't attach that to the active. There's, and there's another fire engine. Oh, okay, no, oh, okay. just doing the attack instead. Um, so that will be about just it. for taking the first prize of this game. Yep, and um, Super Rod goes down for Luke. As yeah, shuffling in. This is to be yeah, one Zernius, one break, and a fairy energy. And he does have Sycamore in his hand, so he's not he's not out of the game, he's absolutely fine stuff, so, but he opted to play the end instead just to conserve the supporters. Yeah. I mean Jesper's now in, in a quite good port position. It's it's now point in oh, well Duke is playing the end. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see uh, so Luke really wants to see some more Pokemon at this point he's only yeah he's, he's, definitely he's a little bit in the danger zone right now you know only got one Xerneas out let's see what he oh he sees an oh, Ultra Ball yeah that's an Ultra Ball and he drew uh, two <laughs> two Lelos as well the, the reason I know they're Lelos is because they're the only GX he plays even though the, the rainbows are yeah. funny on the stream because you know it's like well, what did he bench he bench some kind of like shiny card is that you know what is that <laughs> But uh, there's no other GXs in his deck, so... Oh, can you remember these golden Reshirams and Seagram? Oh, they were the they, worst! They were very hard, yeah. Yeah. They looked amazing, but yeah. like, you actually put it down, it's like... What about okay, what am I... it's gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, down goes the Lele for Luke, who's uh, gonna, gonna find himself a supporter just, supporter just now. Um, looks like he's finding himself a Bridget for next turn. Oh, interesting to see. Luke does play the Tapu Koko promo. Oh, he does? He does. This is very interesting. So, I mean, we see this card being put into so many decks now. Even if you don't play the Espeon EX to go with it, it's just so... Being able to spread 20 to everything who does a double yeah. colorless, it seems like it's so strong and appealing. And a lot of decks are playing double colorless energies anyway, so... Yeah. And the, I think the thing that I really like about it as well, which is just... As much of a merit on its own, it has a retreat cost of zero, so you yeah. can never be punished for playing it because yeah. if it gets brought up, it's like let's, let's retreat, you know. <laughs> it's a really, really strong card. Maybe yeah. it's also nice for Luke to to have a another starter that is not well. It's not his ideal starter, but it's not bad to start with it as it has no retreat cost. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it, just because it doesn't do GM anti, almost it doesn't matter, you know, because yeah. again, you can just retreat into it. Um, no, it's better than an Oranguru or a Lele. Um, you see there Luke doing a Geomancy, so he was able to get two bench Pokemon out, which is great for him, so he's able to use Geomancy to the full effect, and uh, he was able to attach to a Lele and a bench Xerneas. But again, like, yes, we're putting a lot of pressure on him because yeah. this this Volcanian now has energy on it, so you're able to retreat the Salazzle and then just take the knockout for 130 on the Xerneas. Jesper's now playing a Lele for another Psychomore, and it looks like he is only one card left in his hand so he played his hand down and yeah then of course he's going for a second more yeah and uh looks like a steam oh he steamed up yeah steam as well and then sycamore discarding an n and what does he find himself there was an ultra ball but does it does he want to do that necessarily um because he's got one more bench slot left so i guess he can grab himself a ho -Oh maybe if he, feels, if he feels he wants to attack with that be a lady for next turn. Maybe even a second Volcanian. Maybe he just wants to check what's left in his deck to see what is. Oh, he goes for Orange. Of course, yeah, of course, because yeah. he hasn't got it out. Yeah, this makes absolute sense. And uh, now they will trouble. And yeah, I don't know what that was for a second. This again, the glare. I can't really, <laughs> can't always see, but um, uh, yeah, for nothing. It's just to get the guard to cut out of his hand. Yeah. I think. Um. Yep. So those all go away. And now he has instruct. Does he find anything useful from that? I'm not sure what he's looking for here. Maybe there's... Oh, okay. Slavs has a free cost of two. Okay, that's... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good to know for later. So, yeah. Going to retreat. And he'll be able to do the Volcanic Heat for the Knockout on Xerneas, leaving Luke with just one attacker, really. Well, Lelia can be an attacker too, but it's really yeah. not what he wants to be bringing up. But he's kind but of... He, he brings up Lele. Ooh. 
I think he's kind of forced to, I guess, because... Yeah, he does not want to lose his Xerneas now. No. As you see, he plays the Rescue Stretcher, opting for the Return to Hand effect, yeah. and another Lele down as well. So, see, this is the problem for Luke now. He's just, you know, got four very easy prizes Has on board. Has Luke played his Bridget yet? I remember seeing it on his hand, but I don't remember him he, playing it. He Lele'd for it and then discarded it off the oh, Ultra Ball. Oh, okay. Because feeling like he wouldn't really have time to play it this game, which makes sense. Like, he just needs to draw cards yeah, every turn that's now. True. Which is a shame for him, because obviously it would be very good otherwise, but he just doesn't really have a choice. Yeah, um, usually you want Bridget in your, your first turn. But yeah. he just wasn't able to get it. Um, yeah, and then for Luke... Um, it's just going to be so hard for him. I mean, he, he could even maybe hit this volcano for 120. Does that even do much for him? Does, is that even helpful? Like, I'm not sure if it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a two turn knockout, anyways. If he if he starts damaging it now. Yeah. So. And in this end as well, it, was, it doesn't even cut down Jesper's options that much. It's still an end to four. Yeah, not at all. Especially with the Oran Guru yeah. out. You just you know, like you said earlier, just play some cards, draw a few more. Um, do you see a max elixir down from Luke, and that is going to be a miss. Oh, oh. he's not even been with that many energy. No, it's he's done one geomancy and a couple of attachments. That's pretty unlucky. Yeah, yeah. Luke's in Luke's in uh, Luke's in a very much a spot of bother right now. If he um, I, I want I don't want to say he's like out of the game entirely because so Xerneas isn't that kind of deck, but. It, again, it's just that little bit too much of like early pressure from Jesper. They're able to take early knockouts, and we and do see no, not even a fairy garden. So he's forced to discard the fairy and yeah. then geomancy. Yeah, and this time it's unlike last game. Luke didn't really had time to geomancy a lot until now. No. So he's just at the start of setting up. Yeah, but even yeah. before he was able yeah. to mount some kind of return pressure because he was able to geomancy from yeah. the very near the beginning. But he said now this is one of his first geomancies and he's not got a huge amount of energy on the board. No, he doesn't. No. So play's going to pass back to Jesper now. He's obviously you can't attack with the Volcanian right now because of the volcanic heat. So it stops you. If you use it, it means you can't use it again mm -hmm. the next turn unless you play something like a Pokemon Ranger. Um, and then the Ultra Ball going down, going to grab himself nothing. I imagine what I'll probably do is uh, retreat into something else and attack with that, but there's no... Oh, actually, no, there's nothing with energy on his side of the field. So, it's like Guzma, Guzma instead. And then... Oh, okay, that works. Yeah. So then he can retreat back into the, the Volcano. And that, that yeah. also works. The first so. one allows him to retreat yeah. without any uh, retreat costs. Yeah, and something for for those of you who are maybe a bit newer to the game or unaware, if uh, a attack has an effect, like you know, oh, you can't use this attack next turn. All those attack, all those effects reset when a Pokemon goes to the bench. So now, if Jesper brings up the Volcano again, he will be able to attack with it in spite of the volcanic heat yeah, effect. The, the same goes with conditions as poisoned or confused; they also disappear if the Pokemon went back down uh, back to the bench. Yes, absolutely. Um, so. Now, yeah, yes, we're just um, just making sure he's got everything right, and he does bring up the volcano and again. Volcanic heat will bring down the Xerneas, bringing down uh, yes, but only three prizes remaining, and back to Luke as really, yeah, this turn he just wants to ma he just wants to max elixir, of course, but he just wants to geomancy the max again. Max elixir. Oh, oh, another miss. Yeah, you can see him shaking. That's so unlucky. Just you see Luke just like shaking his head, like what is going on here? You know, yeah. just. Deck just not cooperating with him at all. It also seems like Jasper's deck list is pretty consistent. Jasper oh. really had no good start, and still he has a, a good board. He's in a good position. He he could find all the cards he needed. Yeah. Maybe yes. Before if he runs a fire deck, he'll run hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not even oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm not even. I'm not even sorry for that one. <laughs> But clearly it's working. So, yeah. It is. Yeah. He's on fire. Yeah, he is. He is. He is like, he's absolutely on fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So we can't do look at the chat all the time because we're only using one screen. So like, we, if we look at the chat, we can't look at the game. But I'm going to probably get... <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yeah, yeah, I'm fully deserve fully deserving of all that. And um yeah, our mic is much more bearable now. Good. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. We're um yeah, glad we're able to fix it for you guys. <laughs> oh, you were asking if master standings are anywhere. Uh I'm afraid they don't have online pairings. 
but uh, we can double check. Yeah, we can. We will. Um, we can. Um, if you guys want, we can maybe do every now and then some some sort of intermediate sort of maybe call out some big names or whatever, just to say, oh yeah, these people are doing well. These people aren't doing so well. Well, mainly the people who are doing well, I guess. Yeah. But uh, we'll do it later. Anyway, switching back to the game, we probably missed everything now. Um, well, so there's like someone played an end. Oh yeah, Jasper played an end. So it looks like Luke just geomancied again. Um, I mean, he has to really. He doesn't really have a choice. He just needs to get get his energies out. Otherwise, he has sort of no chance of pulling off a comeback. Uh, the end for Jesper finding another fire energy, Kiawe. But um, yeah, it looks like he was actually able yeah. to retreat and somehow take an, another KO. So, gosh. It's also not only that Jesper is taking the prices. He's also taking the energies from Luke's field. Absolutely. So that really hurts Luke. Yeah, because, of course, the less energies that Luke has, the less chance he has of yeah. actually taking knockouts in return. I mean... And you can see how much he, he's struggling to get the energies into get into play at all. Yeah, so, because, of course, yeah. Jesper just says, nope, can't Looks keep Looks like he's counting the energies in his discard pile. Yeah, see how many yeah. he's actually been through. It'd be interesting to see if he's actually... Okay, he's playing a super rod, okay. shuffling at, back in one Xerneas, N2 energy. Yeah, he needs to get at least some energy back at this point yeah. because this, uh, if he doesn't... If you can't Geomancy for anything, or even at, at this point, do you maybe just like switch lanes and just go for the attack? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven energy on board right now. Oh, no, so even with a choice band, the Xerneas break can't do live stream to KO. It looks no. like instead the choice band is going on the Lele. Oh, so... <laughs> Maybe he's going for a Lily attack. Maybe. And saving the energies on the Xerneas while keeping Xerneas on the bench. But, well, Jesper only has two prize cards left. So a knockout on Lily would be enough for Jesper yeah. to win the game. It looks like, I'm not sure if Luke already attached this turn, but if he didn't, he also missed uh, energy. If he had yeah. one more energy, he actually, I think that actually would be, there's a choice band on that uh, Xerneas on the bench. So oh, okay. he'd actually be able to... Yeah, take the KO, but as it stands... It looks like Jasper's reading the card. <laughs> reading... <laughs> Why is he reading on Guru? He literally has one inside the field. What are you doing, Jasper? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, he, oh he, did have, he did have the energy, so maybe he is just content to... Oh, he also has a break now. Oh, okay, so yeah, he's fine. He's got the knockout then. Yeah. Yeah, no sense. Then you get do instructor for one. Oh, why was Luke shaking his head then? Like, maybe I guess because it's still a, a, he's still in a bad in a bad spot, I guess. But he will at least be able to take out this um this volcanium, which is one of the biggest threats right now. The only problem for Jesper, the, the only problem for Luke will be if Jesper has an energy and a Guzma, he just does the Salazar GX attack on a late late to finish yeah. the game. So that's what Luke is banking on right now with Jesper not having energy plus Guzma, because if he does, then that's over. Oh wait, is that not even a knockout? I thought it was. Whoa. No. It seems like it's not enough. I must have miscounted. Yeah, one, two. F oh, maybe. Maybe it's only maybe there's less energy on the level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there must be. There must be less energy yeah. than, we, than we thought. There's the steam up. It's the uh, sycamore. Wait, what, is it steam up? What? How, wait, hold on. What's going on? Is that? I think he played Sycamore. Yeah, but he, how did he bring the Lele active? Um, is there something, is something we're missing? That's a good question. Like, maybe, did he play a Switch and we just didn't see it? Well, that's the the only way. Yeah. If, if, if we're going to feel uh, really silly if we miss something like that, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. yeah, okay, so yeah, the one steam up obviously will mean the volcanic, volcanic heat will do 160, that's not for a knockout. Luke does have the XP share this time, that's good, so he does at least get to keep one energy. At least. Yeah, <laughs> and but I mean, if you're Luke here, literally any. He, it, he lost almost all his energy, so. Yeah, and also, you, all Jesper needs at this point to win the game is a fire energy just to attack with Salazzle. Like, yeah. That's it, and that wins him the game at that point, so. If he has that, then yeah, it's pretty much just game over. It now doesn't hurt him to retreat uh, Volcanion manually through discarding all the energies because nope. he doesn't need them anyway. Nope, indeed. And yeah, Luke realizing he just needs to promote something with like yeah. a large amount of HP. Uh, does he have the fire energy? No, he doesn't. He benches the Salazzle. Not yet, Sycamore. but he still has 
Yeah. There, oh, there it there is. There it is. Yep. So Jesper takes a pretty convincing 2-0 win uh, against Luke Kirkham. Luke just, the deck really just not cooperating with him in that game. Yes, it was just too fast, too furious. So <laughs> just... I'll just see if I can get Jesper for a winner interview. Yep. Okay. So we're going to try and get him in right now, but uh, we'll go for a very, very, very quick, quick break. And then until then, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. In the meantime, you can have a... This can be our interview and coming screen. Here you go. There. All right, hello everyone. I'm here with uh, Jesper Luxak himself. So, <laughs> congratulations! Wow. <laughs> I mean, to be to be fair, like um, I drew quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, I and uh, he, he drew he drew quite, quite poorly. But your deck is built to do that. I mean, the, the fire deck is just built to be really consistent, and really fast, hit hard, and that's how it won both games, right? Yeah, quite max like so did it, and then I think like game one, turn one, KIA and full Keenan was just like super sick. Yeah, yeah, it was. Because I was thinking like. Well, I can't search out Terminator, I can't search out shit, and then I was like, <laughs> um, well, I can Kiawa him active, because usually that's a no-go in every matchup. But yeah, yeah. He started Xerneas, so I was like, yeah, Kiawa active, I can take knockouts. Yeah, because as soon as you see Xerneas, you know that they're going to spend a few turns doing Geomancy, so there's no, it, it's not really risky at all, because yeah, even yeah. even if he has Lele DCE, he'd much rather Geomancy to start building up his ball. Oh, yeah, and there were certain points in game two where I was thinking, like, yeah. Like three times before, I knew this was locked up. And it was just like draw energy, and I played fourteen. So yeah, I guess that wouldn't be a problem, but it can always be a problem if something happens. Yeah, of course. So when it comes to this list you built, so I noticed it's almost like a hybrid of Horus, Lazarus, and Volcanian Terminator. You have like the whole sort of fire team assembled. Oh yeah. Yeah. So what made you decide to play like this version of the Volcanian deck? You just like um, I haven't played really since Worlds. Uh, I started in school and stuff like that. So okay. in my German class. Three days ago, I made my list and I was <laughs> very satisfied with it because I was very bored. <laughs> and uh, last night, I changed up two turnators to uh, Ho's because I think like Ho's not that good anymore. 
uh, as opposed to turning because you discard your energies. So especially in standard, where because the thing is with expanded, for example, where turning is did well. You have blacksmith, so you can just keep doing it over and over oh, again. Oh yeah, it, it's difficult to stream turning, but if you draw your switches and Guzmas, Guzmas is so good at it. Yeah. If you draw a switch and Guzma, you saw just like a two switch, switch, switch. Yeah. All the so time. are you playing just Ho? Or are you also playing one turning? I think we did see one. Double turning, a double Ho. Oh, two of each. Two, okay. two Salasol, two Volcanian, one Volcanian baby. One on Rangaroo and then free top Lele. Fair enough, fair enough. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really strong. I really like how, because one of the things with the, um, with the Volcano, with not the, the, the Harris Lazzle deck, because it got a little bit popular because Takuya and Nader played it at Worlds. Yeah, I actually discussed his list with him. Oh, you know, did you? I, I wrote him last night, I was like, yeah, this sounds good. I'm, I'm at 61 cards, can you please always like, yeah. cut this, cut that? Yeah. And then I cut a few things to fit yeah. my own playstyle. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. But do you feel like, because one of the weaknesses of that deck is a late game end, is that why you added in stuff like Oranguru and also had the, add yourself the option to attack with, um, I guess, or is it, well, just you know, other things essentially, because it, it's not entirely focused on you know Ho -Oh and Salazzo. You also got you know, some more Turtonators yeah, in there as well. It, it's very hybrid kind of thing. I yeah. like that. I like having options and still being consistent. You yeah. saw in Rangu, like my friend wanted to do twenty plus cards. Yeah, and here from you don't even need a late game, or you kind of need it, but when you draw like I did, and um, and. You just play down early, you get all the cards before you even need them. Yeah, so you absolutely. can like play the Ultra Balls. I think I did that once or twice, where yeah. you just Ultra Ball and then Epistle, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Instructed. Then, yes, yeah. that's the um, So then, one last question before I let you go for, to get ready for your next round. Is there anything that in the field that, you would, that you're scared of? Look, look, maybe not scared of, but you think, oh, I'd rather not play against this if I could avoid it. Uh, Guardian Grinch is very difficult. That makes I was just thinking that people guard, uh, like try counter Guardian, so... My 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 mind going into this like host Lazo could be anything that isn't guarding Grinja. That, that's fair enough. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. Well, thank you very much for having me into us. Thanks, so uh, thanks much. and uh, good luck for the rest of your rounds. And yes. guys, we will be back uh, as soon as this round is over. Well, when the next round starts, with round three. So until then, don't go anywhere. There we go. Alrighty. Yep.